Hi everyone, I'm Sam. I'm a violinist who works at Middle C Music. And today I'm gonna give you guys your first lesson on the violin. Uh, yeah, so pretty much the first thing that you guys need to know uh, is congratulations. You decided to learn a very prestigious, a very excellent instrument that hasn't changed for over hundreds of years. And people like myself uh, work toward, work all their lives to play this really beautiful instrument and it's just a lot of fun and you get to be very creative and it's, it, it makes you practice and it's just everything great. So, uh, but the first thing that I want to tell you about violin, uh, the first thing you're going to want to do when you get started is that you're going to go to your local music store, Middle C Music or wherever you live. Uh, you're going to go to your local music store and you're going to get sized for your violin. So what does this mean? Well, uh, violins, although it hasn't changed for hundreds of years, come in all different shapes and sizes. I have this lovely little violin here. This is an eighth sized violin. We give these to some of our younger kids here in the store. Um, and as you can see, I can't play this little violin because if I did, I'd be very, very uncomfortable. I don't have space to move my fingers. I'd be very out of tune and I'm just all scrunched up and I can't really do anything. But if you're a little kid, uh, like, like me, when I started playing violin, you're, uh, you're gonna need a much smaller size. But, so make sure you go to your local music store, your trusted music store, and get sized for an instrument. That's gonna be number one priority if you wanna get started. But if you're a big guy like me, you're gonna want a full-size violin like this guy. Look at, look at this beautiful instrument. You can rent this instrument from us at Middle C Music. Um, but just to get started, what we're gonna do today, we're just going to get a very good feel for the instrument. Violin takes a very long time to get used to posture-wise and technique-wise. There's a very specific way to play this instrument and it takes a long time to get used to, but with some practice, you'll get there in no time. So. Let's just get right into it. So, we have a lovely violin here. Uh, lots of stuff are going on, but as you can see, the violin, like the ukulele, for instance, has four strings. It's very loud and bright. I love this instrument. But yeah, so the deepest string is gonna be G. The next one over is going to be D, and then A, and then E. Now. When I, when I was coming along, I was given a very fun acronym to memorize the letters of these strings. Um, and that is good, uh, no, is Great Danes are enormous. If you ever seen a Great Dane, they're huge, especially when you're a little kid like I was um, quite a number of years ago. Anyways, um, we're just gonna go over some of the parts of the violin. It's very important that you get to know every single aspect of this instrument. It's, it's like meeting a friend for the first time. You wanna get to know them. So right at the top here, we have this lovely piece of wood, this nice curvy piece, I don't know if you can see that very well, is going to be called the scroll. And it's called the scroll for a number of obvious reasons, but mostly because it looks like a scroll of rolled up paper. Um, the next thing is going to be the pegs. We have these lovely little pegs here, four pegs on each violin, one for each string. And what these pegs do is that they essentially tune the violin at, at what I like to call major increments. So watch what happens when I pluck this string and then turn it. It gets higher, right? And if I turn it down, it goes all the way down. So that's exactly what th those pegs are gonna do. All four pegs for four for all the four strings. All right. And then you have this lovely piece here. This is where you're gonna put your hand when you play. Uh, this, is, this is what we call the neck. Now the neck is attached to this very lovely piece of ebony wood called the fingerboard. For obvious reasons, this is where you're gonna put your fingers when you play. Um, so that's that. Then we have a whole bunch of other stuff going on with the violin. This is what we call the top plate, this flat piece of wood here. And then the back is where we have the back plate uh, or the bottom plate. 
And a lot of really nice violins are going to really shine with these plates. Like you can just tell from the varnish alone on this instrument, it's very, very well made. It's handmade. Um, but yeah, and just, like the, and just like people, violins have, you know, body parts similar to us. These are the shoulders. And then these little, these little sides here, what, what I was, or is what we call the ribs. And then we have what's called the round or, or the bottom or anything, pretty much, or the base, what some people call. There's many names for these sorts of things, but what matters is, is that you know what these parts are and that, you, and that they stick with you. Um, now, as you can see, the strings are held up by this little piece of wood right here. And it has this lovely little design on there. Uh, this is what we call the bridge. And obviously, you can, you can see it's called the bridge because the piece looks like a bridge. It creates a bridge with the strings. Many, re many number of reasons why it's called the bridge. Uh, then we have the tailpiece. So we have this nice tailpiece that's going to hold all these strings together. It's going to create tension on this opposite end of the instrument. And then we have these little knobs right here. I don't know if you can see these uh, quite well, but these little knobs are what we call fine tuners. And they're going to do the same thing that these pegs do. They're going to tune your instrument, but they're going to tune it at only minor increments. And it's going to be a bit difficult to hear when you start playing this. So you're going to have, and in most instances, you prob if you're starting out on the violin, uh, you're probably not going to want to touch these. You're probably going to have to let your teacher tune it for you. So you won't really have to worry about using it until you get some practice in. But just to demonstrate, we're going to pluck the A string. And then if I turn it, if I turn this fine tuner in a specific direction, see the pitch just got lower. So that's exactly what, the, that's what these fine tuners are going to do. So I'm just going to turn this back. That sounds good to me. We're just about done. We have the chin rest over here for obvious reasons. This is where you're going to rest your chin to play the instrument. And then we have a few minor pieces to get into. This little piece of wire right here is going to be called the tail gut. Back when the violin was a really new instrument for the tail pieces such as these, they would actually use animal guts to hold everything together. and they were at, and they would actually use gut for the strings. And the reason why is that gut was actually so strong, you could stretch it really, really far, and it would be really, really strong. And it would just basically hold everything together. This little black piece right here, where the tail gut is resting on, is what we call the saddle. Uh, that's basically going to protect the wood. It's going to keep everything a little more intact. And then we have the button, or the end button, as some people like to call it. This is basically everything that's going to be holding things together. If this button comes off, your tailpiece comes off. And if your tailpiece comes off, your strings come off. And then your bridge comes off. And everything comes off. Not necessarily a bad thing, but you know you probably want to avoid touching this piece when you start out. Um, so that's the violin itself. That's the actual instrument. But you can't play the violin without a bow. That's right. And the bow, there aren't that many parts to a bow, but just to get into it really quickly, we have this lovely little tip here. Um, this is one of our student bows here at the store. It's made out of fiberglass. It's very lightweight, very great for, uh, for kids or, or adults who are just starting out. You don't have to break the bank with, any, with the violin if you're just starting out. Um, you can get a very reasonable, very economical instrument at any local music store, especially ours. Um, so that's the tip, right? And then we have the stick. That's going to be the majority of, of the bow right along here. This is all the good stuff. And then we have this. We have all this hair. What's this hair here? Well, um, it's called the bow hair, obviously, but this is actually made out of horse hair. Uh, some really nice bows are, uh, actually any bow is going to be made out of horse hair. Uh, and they actually come in different colors too. You, you surprisingly, you can get um, you can get black bow hair on your violin. That creates a little more friction with the strings. Some bass players really like that. Uh, you can also get purple uh, bow hair too. Uh, the options are kind of endless at this point, but this is the hair. This is what's going to create direct contact with the strings. 
And I'm going to demonstrate that to you in just a second. Then we have this. Some people call it the winding. When I was coming around, I was, uh, I was told this is the finger guard. And I'm going to show you exactly why it's called the finger guard in a second. And then we have this lovely little black ebony piece right here. We call this the frog. Um, I guess if you really want it to, it kind of resembles a frog, but I'll leave that up to your imagination. Um, and then we have this lovely little silver piece here. This is called the ferrule. It's a French word. It basically keeps all the hair together. If you ever get your bow rehaired, this is something that's going to come off and slide off. Um, and then last but not least, we have the winding. This, this little piece right here, this little silver part right at the end of the bow is what's going to control the tension of the horsehair that we have. And I'll demonstrate this. So if I turn, look at how loose that hair is. You see how that's shaking? This is very, very loose. In fact, I could loosen it up all the way and I can take out the frog and look at what we have here. It's basically like a little mini tail. This is, this is why the viol, like I said, the violin hasn't changed in a very, very long time. And this is one of those things. Anyway, if you turn it the opposite direction, you can tighten it. And look at how tight I can get this. You never want your bow to be too tight. Like, look at how tight this is. See how this bow is very, very straight. It's almost parallel with the horse hair that we see at the bottom. This isn't what you want. This is going to create too much tension. And if you have too much tension, you actually risk breaking your bow, and that's not good. Um, so what you want to do when you play is you want to have it, and your teacher can help you out with this too, by the way, but you want to have your bow, you want to see a natural curve. So look at this curve right here. See how everything is just kind of like a little dip, like you have the thinnest part right in the middle. And you'll, know, and you'll know your bow is at a proper tension if you can fit a pencil right in the thinnest part. And it'll, it'll fit almost perfectly. You should be able to hold it there a little bit. But um, that's the bow. That was the violin. Now, I'm at, now what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to actually demonstrate how you get started playing. Um, now, holding the bow actually takes a lot of practice. Um, there's many ways to practice it. A lot of teachers will tell you to try practice holding it on a pencil first, but what you're going to do, uh, you're going to take your thumb, and your thumb is going to go right underneath the frog, right underneath the stick, it's, and you're going to make a curve. See how my thumb is kind of bent? My thumb is always going to be bent when I play. And, when a, a lot of kids, when they start out, this is going to feel really uncomfortable. You're probably going to want to hold it like this. And that's not good. That's going to create a lot of tension in your hand. It's actually going to be quite painful if you do. So trust me, uh, just take my word for it. Always curve your thumb. You're going to thank me later. My middle and my ring finger are going to come directly over the frog. You see that? And then I have these two fingers left here. What am I going to do with these? So my index finger is going to come right on the finger guard. This is exactly what the finger guard is supposed to do. It's going to keep your index finger from sliding. And then your ring finger is going to go directly on top like this. So this is how you're going to hold the bow. It looks very awkward. It actually doesn't look that awkward. It's going to feel awkward at first. But the big thing about violin when you start out, guys, is that practice is always key. Um, there's a couple of famous violinists who like to say you need to practice 40 hours a day. If there were 40 hours a day, um, uh, you'd probably want to take them up on that. But the point is, is that you should always practice whenever you can. Um, so that's how you're going to hold the bow. Now the instrument, what a, lot, what, a lot, what a lot of you are going to start doing at first is you're probably going to start holding the violin this way. Now traditionally, you're going to want to hold it where uh, you're going to want to hold it like this with your fingers on the fingerboard and your thumb, your, your, ba your whole hand just sort of caressing this neck that I showed you earlier. And that's, you know, you're going to be able to play a whole bunch of notes, a whole bunch of cool things that you're going to learn in time. But for now, just focus on holding the violin at the shoulder. So you're going to take your left hand, place it on the right shoulder. You're going to have the violin 
facing you like this. So you're going to see the back side. You're going to take your left hand on, on your left, and then you're going to flip it around. So you see how I did that? I'm going to show you one more time. So hand, shoulder, twist. That's exactly what you're going to do. Um, and the rest is history, pretty much. Once you have your bow hold and once you have your, your violin resting on your chin, you're going to want to have your feet shoulder width apart. And you're going to want to place your chin on the chin rest, right? And the rest is history. You kind of just go for it. You're going to create, your teacher's going to show you exactly how to do really nice and firm bow strokes. But just to show you right off the bat, this is what it's going to sound like. <laughs> See how loud and lovely that rings? Now, I actually forgot to mention that before you start playing, um, actually every time you start, every time before you start playing, you're going to want to rosin your bow. Now I have this lovely little piece of scratched up rosin here. And rosin is made from tree sap. Really good rosin is going to be aged, but any sort of rosin, as long as it's made from the sap, is going to be fine. And what you're going to do, you're basically going to stroke the horse hair with your rosin, just going up and down, very casually, very gradually. Just work your way up and down the bow. And make sure you get a lot of it on there. This stuff is going to last you a really long time, so be very, very generous. And you can kind of see right at the tip, I don't know if you can see the color difference, but the tip, I purposely didn't rosin this end, so that way I could show you the, the difference in color. The rest of this bow looks pearl white, and then you have the tip here, which hasn't been rosined, and it looks like kind of a cream or like a yellow almost. So make sure you get every little aspect you can. It's gonna be, it's gonna be very, very great for your sound, and it's just gonna make everything a lot easier to play. So always make sure you put your rosin on before you start. Um, and that's pretty much it. Make sure, you, uh, make sure you practice holding the instrument like I showed you. Make sure you practice the bow like I showed you. Now, if you're an adult, chances are um, you, you have the option. In fact, this doesn't really apply to adults. Kids could do this too. You have the option of using a shoulder rest. Some teachers like to start start out having a shoulder rest right off the bat, but it really depends on the play style and the methodology of teaching that you're in. There's no real wrong way uh, to learn it, especially, uh, especially if you have a really trusted teacher, which there are a lot of. But what you're going to do, you're going to put your shoulder rest. It's going to look something like this. See how one end is curved above the other? Well, this curve, this fat end right here, you're going to take your violin, you're going to you're going to look at it like this and you're going to flip it around. And you're going to take this fat end and you're going to place it on top. These little nice rubber hooks are going to keep everything tight. And you're just going to kind of place it on there and you're going to want to stretch it out so that everything stays nice and tight. And what and what this is going to allow you to do, you can just place your your chin right on here, your shoulder rest I'm going to turn around so hopefully you can see it. It's going to be holding it right. It's on your shoulder. That's exactly what it's going to do. Your shoulder, it's going to rest on your shoulder, hence shoulder rest. And look at what I can do. No hands. I can hold the violin right by myself very comfortably, just like this. I can hold it this way. I'm not doing any, I'm not anxious about it. As long as I know my shoulder rest is on my violin. I know I'm I know I know she's safe. I know she's ready to play. And look at all this mobility I have. I can go up and down the neck very very easily. And Wow, that rosin really made a difference. Um and now I can go all the way up the neck. Now you're probably not going to sound like that with your uh, coming out of your first lesson, but if you've been playing for a really long time, like I have, 18 years, um, you're going to get a lot of practice in, and you're going to, and you're probably going to sound a lot better than I do, uh, surprisingly. Um, 
But that's pretty much it. If you take all those things into consideration and if you practice, you're going to sound really, really great. You can do all sorts of stuff with the violin. I'm just going to show you some neat little tricks. Uh, you're going to want to know your scales. Uh, you can play chords. And there's a whole bunch of bowing technique you can do, like a very popular one is spiccato. Like... Um, you can play harmonics. You can... The violin is a soprano instrument, so it goes up, r the register is really, really high. Um, I can go even higher. Uh, but this is just a whole bunch of world of technique that the violin is known for. And the more practice you put in, the more you're going to love and enjoy this instrument. Uh, especially if you're young, like I was when I started. Uh, if you're young, you're obviously going to want to pick up a very small size violin, depending on your age or your height. And what's great about this instrument is that if you start at a young age, uh, the violin kind of grows up with you. So the taller you get, the bigger you get the bigger your violin gets. Uh, so you're gonna always wanna exchange it for different sizes, the, uh, the older you get and everything. And eventually it's gonna become full grown, like you will af after every time you practice and the love that you give to your instrument. Um, so that's all for now. If you guys really enjoyed this video and re really wanna take up the violin, come on down to the store. We'll get you sized up. We'll get you a really nice instrument like this. For any of you adults or teens out there, you can actually rent this instrument that I'm holding in my hand. This is a lovely Eastman violin that we got quite recently. And it's, as you can hear, I'm a little out of practice for that piece, but um, uh, you can actually rent this very loud and very bright instrument from us at Middle C. So that's all for now. I'm Sam. I gave you your first lesson, and hopefully I'll see you at the store. Come on down.